Hi, and welcome to this energizing flow for strength and flexibility. We're going to begin today's class in child's pose, connecting to the breath. Let's get started. Roll out your mat. And as you hold in child's, feel your hips release down towards your heels. Let your shoulders relax. Let yourself melt down into the floor. Take three conscious breaths in and out through your nose. On the in-breath, feel the expansion of your back ribs, the skin soft so they can expand. And as you exhale, release further into the ground. Then come up onto hands and knees. Cat cow, move with your breath. As you exhale, round through your back. Let the hands and the knees sink into the ground so the back can spread more. And as you inhale, flip into extension. As you exhale, round through your spine. Inhale into extension. Last one, exhale, round out. And inhale. Come to neutral and step your left foot up to the outside of your left hand. Bring your hand to the inside of your knee and then reach the knee away from you, open up the inner leg and bring the knee back. And just do that a few times. Just seeing how much external rotation and abduction you can get. Then bring your knee into the midline, lift your back knee, take your left arm up and twist. Turn your left palm forward, reach your left arm overhead. Take your arm back up both hands down onto the inside of the foot. As you inhale, lengthen your spine, reach your hips towards your wrists. And as you exhale, reach the hips back, let the head drop. Inhale, glide forward, deeper into the lunge. Exhale, stretch back. Inhale, forward into the lunge. And as you exhale, step into plank position. Feel the heat building in your body as you hold in the plank. Reach the big toe mounds down, engage your legs. Then with your toes curled under, drop your knees down. Inhale, stretch back. Exhale, come forward, shoulders over your wrists, and then hips towards your wrists like you're doing up dog. Exhale, stretch back. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, stretch back. Come up onto your hands and your knees and bring your right foot to the outside of your right hand. Bring your hand to the inside of your knee and start to move your knee away from you. Stretch through the inner leg. Exhale, come back. And then just moving your knee back and forth. Doesn't have to be with the breath. Bring the knee back into the midline. Then reach up and twist as you lift your back knee up. Turn your right palm forward and reach your right arm overhead. 
bring your arm back up. Bring your hand down onto the inside of your foot. And as you exhale, lift your hips and stretch back. Inhale, glide the hips forward. Exhale, stretch back. Inhale, glide the hips forward. Last one, exhale, stretch back. And inhale, come forward, step your foot back into plank position. Hold near plank pose. Good, now reach from your shoulder blades into your hands. So instead of sinking into your shoulders, push the floor away and then pull your hips up and back, keeping the reach from the blades into the hands without crunching your neck. Inhale, glide forward into plank. Exhale, lift, push the floor away from you and stretch back. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, lift and stretch back. Inhale, glide forward. Set your right knee down. Twist and open up. Take your left arm up. Hold here with your right knee down or step back into full side plank and hold for five breaths. Slowly with control, come back into plank position. Drop left knee and open up. Hold there or step into side plank. Come back into plank position. Lift the hips, stretch back into downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet, one handprint at a time. Fold forward the back of your mat. Clasp your hands behind your back and let your head drop. Then drop your hips back into a squat position as you raise your arms up into a V position. And see how low you can drop the butt as you reach the arms. Then hands behind your back, clasp and reach over. Drop the buttocks into the squat as you raise the arms. Two more times. Interlock and stretch. You can use a strap or a towel if the shoulders don't allow. Drop into the squat as you raise your arms. Last one, clasp hands and fold. And drop into squat, raise arms. Bring your hands to prayer position as you hold in your squat. And take your arms forward, drive into your heels, press into your feet, come all the way up to stand. Then raise your arms up, reach up for the sky. Drop your right arm and side bend to your right. Come back up, drop your left arm and side bend to your left. Come back up, reach both arms, spread arms and fold forward. Inhale into a flat back. Step back into plank position. Lower down slowly onto your belly, knees down or legs straight if you have the upper body strength. Control yourself to elbow height, hover one inch above the mat, all the way down. Press back up into plank position. Lower slowly to elbow height, one inch above the mat, all the way down, last one. Back up to plank, control to elbow height, one inch above the mat, all the way down. 
stretch your arms forward, reach through your fingers as you reach back through your toes. Then slide your hands next to your chest in cobra position. Let's wake up the muscles in the upper back. So as you engage your glutes, engage your back muscles, roll your heart up as much as you can using your back strength and roll your heart down. Roll yourself up. Your hands are just a placeholder, so don't push so much with your hands. Instead, engage your back muscles like you're a snake. Roll yourself up and then roll yourself back down. Two more, roll up. Squeeze the backs of the legs, the glutes. Roll down. Last one. Coil yourself up. And back down. Press into plank position. Stretch back into downward facing dog. Now hold this down dog or challenge yourself one handed down dog with a twist. Bring your right hand to your left shin or ankle. Change. Left hand to right shin or ankle. And both hands down. Look forward, step or hop. Inhale, elongate. Exhale, fold. Drop hips, sit back, Utkatasana. Stand, Samastiti. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come up halfway. And exhale, step back. From plank pose, glide back into down dog. Shift the plank and pull your right knee up. Inhale, tap your knee down and lengthen. Exhale, pull back up. Inhale, tap down. Exhale, pull up. Inhale, three-legged dog. Bend your knee, open up your hip, keeping your lower back long. Reach your buttocks out of your lower back. Exhale, step your foot up to your thumb and inhale, come up into warrior one. Open to your side, warrior two. Flip your palm, reverse warrior, inhale. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, come back up, warrior two. Straighten your right leg and reach into triangle. Bring your left hand down, spin your back heel up, bend your right knee, plant your left hand and twist, take your right arm up. Now rotate onto the outside edges of your feet, lift your bottom hip and reach your right arm overhead. Move your right knee out and away from you. Just like we practiced at the beginning, abducting. And then take your top arm back up. 
Come back into a lunge position with the hands onto the inside of the foot. Step into plank pose. Glide back into dog. Shift into plank pose and pull your left knee up. Push the ground away as you tuck up. Inhale, drop your knee, lengthen. Exhale, pull it up. Inhale, drop knee. Exhale, pull up. Inhale, reach back, three-legged dog. Bend your knee, open up your hip. Reach your buttocks out of your lower back as you push the ground away. Then step your foot up to your thumb and inhale, come up into warrior one. Open to your side, warrior two. Reverse warrior, inhale. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, come back up, straighten your left leg, and as you exhale, reach into triangle pose. Bring your right hand down, spin your back heel up, bend your left knee and twist. Then turn onto the outside edges of your feet and lift your bottom hip as you reach your left arm over. Spin your feet back to the starting position and left hand onto the inside of the foot. Hold here in your lunge. Now from here, we're gonna get a little funky with the skandasan. So spin your back heel down, walk your hands around to your back leg and lunge towards your back leg as you stretch the left leg towards straight. Watch out for the credenza. Then change sides. Bend the left knee and squat towards the left heel as the back toes spin up. The right ones now. One more time, change sides. And you can either keep the butt up with the heel down. If you're very flexible, you can drop buttocks with the heel down or you can lift the heel slightly as you drop the buttock down. What are worse for you? Chain sides. And eventually you might even be able to bring your hands to prayer and then lift out of it without hands touching the ground. Fold forward in the middle, leg straight. and walk around to the top of your mat. Step back, downward facing dog. So at this point, we're gonna practice walking up the, walking the legs up the wall for a handstand <clears throat> and then holding a leg up. Now, if you're not quite there, you can just practice dolphin pose, down dog on your forearms, holding one leg up and then the other. Otherwise, we're gonna practice measuring ourselves about a leg's distance away from the wall 
and then trying to hold one leg up and then the other. So we'll plant the hands right underneath the shoulders. Reach the shoulder blades into the hands like we practiced and lift up in the middle so the rib cage is in. Reach the buttocks to the heels. And then if you have a wall or a chair or something nearby, you can walk up it. You can start with knees bent, pushing the blades into the hands and lifting up in your middle. Reach the buttocks up to the heels as you lift your hips up over your shoulders. If that's easy, you can try stretching the legs straight. One leg up, one leg to the wall. And then you can rebend and change. And then take a rest when you need. Now what's important when you're doing that one is you could probably see from the side view on that one best, but your lower back will want to arch, the buttocks will want to fall away from the wall into the middle of the room. You want to tuck your buttocks up towards the heels and towards the sky. Okay, now this next one will be helpful to have a wall, but it's not a requirement. But I'm going to take my mat over to the wall here. And then go right knee against the wall as close as I could get and left foot forward. All right, so as we hold here in this stretch, we're going to try some dynamic stretching. So first, just take a few breaths and let your body relax into the shape. So you're just letting go of any apprehension. And then once you feel like your body isn't fighting, then we can start to move. But if you still feel like I can't let go of the apprehension, my body's really resisting this position, you'll just stay here and wait for the body to open. That's enough. Otherwise, we can try to make it dynamic. So you can lift your hips up and back to your heel and then bring your hips forward. And just do that a few times with your breath. I find that doing these dynamic movements help to let go of some of the apprehension and allow you to relax a little bit deeper into the shape that we're going for, into the stretch that we're going for. So you might even notice it with each time you come forward, you're like, oh, I can go a little bit deeper. Maybe I can relax a little bit more. Okay, then let's try to go upright and just feel how much you can go there. And then we'll try the dynamic movement. Let's take an arm up overhead as you reach the buttock down and then we'll just lunge forward and then go up and back a few times. A little bit of a chin tuck, a little bit of a butt tuck as you lift the arm up. And then hold in the up position and see how upright you can make yourself without fighting. And you may notice that after having done the dynamic movement, you can be much more upright than if you hadn't. So that's kind of cool. Okay, release that and change sides. All right, so first, just a few breaths, just to relax into position. You're safe. You can be here. It's okay. And then once you feel that, you can start to add a little dynamic movement, a little back and forth. As long as you feel that the range you're moving in is safe each time. Your nervous system will start to allow for a little bit more movement. And then 
you can probably go a little bit deeper than after you've done it a few times. Now let's go towards the upright one. We'll do the dynamic movement there. Here we go. A little bit of a buttock and chin tuck, but without straining. Yeah, at the beginning of this, there's no way I'd be able to go all the way upright, but after this dynamic movement, Right now, hold the upright position. Five breaths. And it might be hands on a block in front of you, it might be hands on the knee, you might be have your back all the way up against the wall, you might take arms overhead if you're very flexible. You don't need to show off, all right? Just relax. Now, <laughs> do it, takes you into the depth of the stretch, whatever you need. If you're not feeling the stretch enough, make sure your down knee is all the way up against the wall and then you're not arching your lower back. Ideally, you could take your lower back all the way against the wall and the roots would be in, the buttocks would be down. Okay, now release that and let's try this one. Swivel your foot over to the side, this bottom foot, and hands on the inside of your right leg. I find this stretch really nice to open up the hips for squatting and open up the groins for wide-legged poses and Baddha Konasana, et cetera. Slowly release that and then change sides. We gotta do that one on the other side. So right knee close to the wall, left foot up. A couple little dynamics here before we go into that stretch and swivel the foot over. I guess you could even add the dynamic movement here. You could kind of butt up and down. Okay, release that one. And then we'll do a couple back bends before we do our final hip openers. So first from uh, modified Virasan, scoop the buttocks under, walk your hands back. And at first let's do a butt lift and roll the chest open, reach the buttocks down, get some length out of the front of the pelvis there, some work in the back body and upper back. And you could hold here or you could drop onto your elbows. You could hold there or lie all the way flat, whatever gives you the best stretch. I kind of like this butt up one, stretching this way. Find the one that works best for you. All right, then we're gonna come back up and we'll try this number. So as you grip your buttocks, you could, with the toes curled under, if possible, reach your right hand back to your heel 
And as you lift your heart, reach your left arm over. And then come back up, change sides, left hand, reach right arm. Back up. If you feel like that's not much of a stretch, point your toes back. And try the other side. Use your glutes, engage your back muscles, lift your heart and reach back. Last one, right hand, left arm reaches over. And change sides. Come back up, sit back. And we'll twist a little bit like we did last summer. Okay, so tuck the knees up and come into a sideline position. Reach the arms and then take your right arm, slide it up along the floor, up overhead, reach, open up all the way, and then take it back to starting position. And reach back up and over. Back to starting position, last one. Reach up and over, hold overhead for a sec, and then go halfway to all the way open from there. Pause. So your arm's at this angle, it's not all the way to this, out to the side, it's not overhead, right in between. And then take it all the way to the side, right at shoulder height. Just relax there. And come back to starting position, change sides. So knees tucked up, slide left arm up along the floor, up overhead. And come back. Again, slide up and over. And this last one will hold. Slide up and over. Pause in overhead position. And then just open up halfway from there. And then let the front arm fall all the way open. And then slide back to starting position. Hug knees to your armpits as you lie on your back. Take happy baby. My flat onto your back for Shavasana. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you for joining me for class today. If you'd like to finish with a five minute guided Shavasana, then you can click this link over here.
If you'd like to finish with a five minute silent Shavasana, you can click this link here. Shavasana is the most important part of your practice. So I recommend that you finish with that. I'll see you next time.